we were able to, to uh, form this nonprofit, Foothills Connect Business and Technology Center, which I run, to develop, redevelop our economy using broadband technologies as the base for a new economy. In that regard, we are developing small businesses and have a toolkit of services that we put at the disposal of small businesses. We pretty much agreed that the industrial revolution in this country had died. It was over, it had moved to China and India, and the idea of, of getting um, more industry, more manufacturing to come back here was probably not uh, the most efficient thing that you could do. And so we looked at developing small business as a way of making our own jobs. So originally, uh, we uh, looked at crafts because there's so many potters and, and uh, painters and woodworkers in the county. And um, uh, we actually spent a, certain, a couple months hunting them down, I actually put together a database of 140 different craftspeople. We thought, well, therein would lie a, uh, a source of uh, people to develop, um, and only um, a couple of the 140 actually did uh, business over the internet, actually had websites. Um, after a few months of trying to organize them, we realized that that was truly herding cats, and that uh, they were very uh, territorial. So we looked at um, another type of business that was going on here. Luckily, luckily, that one, we decided not to do that one. And that was, there was a luxury home building business here. Uh, even though this is a, a very poor county, to give you an idea of how many wealthy people moved in, um, between um, 2000 and 2005, even though the, the economy was collapsing, according to the Chamber of Commerce, the average income in this county went up by 50% because of the very wealthy people that moved in to occupy the ridges to get the vistas of this beautiful county that has been the background for several movies. Um, we saw that when we realized that 50% of the textile workers that were laid off were females, we said, well, therein lies a huge business that uh, could be female oriented for contract management, specification management, project management, risk management. Um, but um, it, we tried to deal with the local training groups and they didn't, they, they didn't uh, exhibit overwhelming interest. So we then moved in just a chance conversation with my cousin, who's a chef in Charlotte. Uh, he's a sous chef. And I said, but if we could get you food, would you buy it? And he said, well, there's probably all kinds of obstacles you're going to have to overcome with centralized purchasing, et cetera, et cetera. But we'll see. Yeah. So I realized there's a real gap here that the farmers might have been great farmers, but are not good businessmen, and that the chefs didn't know anything about these guys. They, would, they were being forced to order from some industrial food processor on the other side of the country. And um, so we started organizing farmers, started meeting farmers, and then we uh, started selling their product over a website that we had designed. And now we're on our fourth iteration of that website. We know what we want. And um, we, uh, we are now selling $5,000 a week So what we're doing now is making piggy banks again with these small farmers. It used to be they all kept piggy banks, yeah. all right? And they fed them all the, the, you know, the produce um, that they couldn't sell or was not marketable. Um, and then they'd put them out in the fields and they would just tear up the soil, crap everywhere. And you would, yeah. so this, we have a really wonderful ag teacher that is teaching his classes. Um, how to reincorporate the symbiotic relationship between animals and horticulture. And so we got a grant and, and we helped him develop it. And uh, 
he went from uh, the first year of 75 high school students where uh, you know they were in there, half of them, because their behavior problems were listless or, you know, it's where they dumped them. To then we started the horticulture program and it went to 150 kids. And then this year, it went to 150 kids with another 150 waitlisted. And even though the county cut 127 teachers, they increased the number of ag teachers out there, uh, doubled them to two, and now all 300 kids are gone. And this is again under the idea that the average farmer in this state is approaching 60. And we, you know, it isn't like they're taking the when the you know kid, high school kids go into the, see the career counselor that they're saying things like you know you're a bright young man or you're a bright young lady you should be a farmer that's not happening all right so uh, and the ag programs have been completely usurped by agribusiness and so this that this these techniques that the kids obviously are attracted to I mean wouldn't you like to be in business and see a you know, a 100% compound growth rate every year. Oh, that's what he's gone, 75, 150, 300, all right? So, uh, you know, we're hitting a cue here, uh, not only in terms of the need for chefs in Charlotte for fresh food, but apparently there's a need for people, these Appalachian agrarian people to get back to the earth. So, you know, for example, the first time I talked to these kids, uh, I went back a month later, this three years ago, and, and talked to them and they said, well, my daddy said I could have a couple acres, because that's what we teach them. You know, you can make more money on five acres than you can on a hundred. Get rid of that tractor, it's costing too much. But you've got to follow these techniques. And um, they, these kids said, well, my daddy said I could have a couple acres, but it's all brush, it's all overgrown. And it'll take thousands of dollars to clear it. And we said, no, it won't. It'll take goats, pigs, chickens, raised beds. And now they're on the tail end of that. 14 months later, I'm sure people thought we were crazy when we said we were gonna do this. And we did it. They did it. All right, so Secretary of, uh, of uh, Agriculture Troxler was here on May the 12th because uh, uh, he heard about it. And uh, I guess uh, what really surprised him is that when the kids got off the school bus, because hey, the farm is far enough away that they, you know, they drive them back and forth. Uh, I guess about 40 kids, 30 kids. And uh, when they got off the school bus, they immediately broke up into about five or six teams and immediately went to work. The teacher, Mr. Higgins, didn't have to say anything to them. And there was no playing around. There was no poking. You know, the girls went over and milked the goats. The boys went over and moved the chicken tractor. Um, you know, the outdoor chickens that we have. Uh, they went out and, and uh, were, uh, uh, you know, uh, checking the fences, making sure all the feed was given, all right? They, they knew what to do, and they were interested in what they were doing. Um, and then secondly, that night when Secretary Troxler spoke to the kids and their parents, we had about maybe 40, 50 pe uh, people show up at the school library to meet with the secretary. Uh, eight kids went up to him and said, we would just want you to know, we're going, we're going into small businesses called farms next year when we graduate, right? Because they're turned on to this stuff. So we hit a cue here. So what we're using now is it's two-pronged strategy. We are uh, increasing the amount of broadband in the area at the same time as we're increasing the number of farmers. And we are now building what we're calling an ecosystem because um, uh, this type of farming, sustainable farming, um, is so new here that there aren't really good outlets for seeds, uh, for fertilizers, you know, uh, chemical-free fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides. Uh, there's no, there's no bone meal here. There's no blood meal uh, if you want to be a certified uh, organic farmer. Uh, there's no implements. All right, I myself. I'm, use these techniques for 30 years in my own, you know, wherever I've lived, um, just because I think it's important to teach your kids how to grow their own food. And uh, for the last 30 years in this country, I have been using mortar hose 
cement mixing hose instead of hose that I used to use in Guatemala, azedones, that actually all I have to do is lift them and they do all the rest of the work. You don't have to put any force on them at all. And we found one. I found one in, in Africa when I was over there recently. So brought it back and we have a guy here, a welder that is reverse engineering how to make them. And he's making those now, as well as broad forks. He's making those. These are tools that allow you to aerate raised beds without destroying the microorganisms in there. So these are, now we're, now that is a form of manufacturing. It's all custom, it's high end, all right? But we are now, based on agriculture, rebuilding an economy. It's very, very interesting. One other little sidelight. That same Marriott chef, Jean-Pierre Marichal, um, is our most, en most enthusiastic backer. Uh, when we had 17 farmers come from Rockingham County, uh, where one of our sister EN ENC-oriented agencies is located, the Rockingham County Business and Technology Center. They're following our footsteps. They'll use our website. But for Greensboro chefs and Greensboro consumers, and um, he uh, drove here from Charlotte when he heard they were here to eat lunch with them. So he drove an hour and 10 minutes here and an hour and 10 minutes back just to meet him because there's Marriott's in Greensboro and he wants to make sure that he gets first shot at the food. But uh, he has been selected, Jean-Pierre, who and he runs the uh, Savannah Red, the only or one of the few five-star restaurants in uh, Charlotte. Um, he has been selected by the James Beard Foundation, you know, like the that real top-notch chef out of New York City, um, now deceased. But they have a guest chef come in, uh, so it's a, a, of national fame. He is going to be the chef this year, and he's taking the kudzu jelly that is made here out of the kudzu blossom, all right, by an 84-year-old woman with him to give away in two and a half ounce jars as favors to people as a unique product from the Appalachians. So that we're gaining, again, this is another product and manufactured product that's based on agriculture that uh, the, I think is soon to be um, very popular here in the country.